Hello there, I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. Welcome to Tips and Tricks. This week on the live stream, we've been working with mandalas. We've been drawing them and creating them different ways and talking about different ways to use them. And that led to a blog post on HowToGetCreative.com about how to draw a petal mandala using a compass. So you can head over there. You'll find the link in the description below. You can head over there later and find out all about how to do that. And then that led to creating a book of 25 patterns of different kinds of mandalas, all of which are original drawings by me. And then you can embellish them and color them any way you want to in case you don't want to draw your own mandalas. You just want to get started being colorful in your life. So did you know that mandalas can be really simple all the way to very, very complex? They can be as complex as those created by the Tibetan monks to take them ages, I don't know how long, but days and days anyway, to create these very elaborate mandalas with millions of grains of colorful sand. And when they're all finished with them, they do whatever they do with them, ceremonies and what have you. And then they sweep the whole beautiful thing into the river, into the water, and it flows away. So they're just the extraordinarily compli complicated and gorgeous. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you can start with a single dot in the middle of the paper and you can grow the mandala from the center point out and you can make it as big as you want, as big as your paper is. You can do whatever kinds of designs you want with pen and pencils and, you know, markers and things like that. So I was cooking the other day. And I was thinking about mandalas and there was just because I've been a little obsessed. I, I admit I've been a little obsessed with mandalas for a little while. I was thinking about them and all of a sudden the inspiration struck and I'm like, I got to do, I got to do this pattern. But I didn't want to come up to the studio to pick up a compass and, you know, do all that jazz. So I started poking around and I thought there's got to be stuff here in my kitchen that I can make a mandala with, right? I decided I would share it with you because I thought it's too much fun to keep all to myself. So I got a piece of paper like so. So here's my paper. This happens to be watercolor paper, but it could be sky. The first one I did was on scratch paper, actually just junk paper. And in my cabinets, I found this plate and I had a Sharpie pen hanging around. So I put my plate, down and you can just trace around the plate and there's the beginning of your mandala or your mandala or your mandala depending on who's talking and then I thought well you know what I probably should put some more patterns in there so I looked in the cabinet and sure enough there was a bowl so I could turn that over and just draw a ring around the bowl. Just trace around it. And so there's another part of the mandala. This happens to be the top of a container of tomatoes. And I just thought, well, that, that ought to make a good circle pattern. And it did. And then I looked in the cabinets again. I, it got to be a game, you know, it's how many things, how many ways could I find things in my own cabinets and kitchen drawers, find things that I could use to create a mandala. And you know what? Sometimes I used them right side up, sometimes use them wrong side up. The other right side, as I call it. And sometimes your pen wants to be a little cantankerous, so you just got to be the boss of it. And this was in a drawer. This, I think, is the top of a spice container. So I drew around that. And then in order to get uh, like a starting point in the center, you could either put a dot or I always have ink pads hanging around various places in my house. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, but it's true. And then I cut off a piece of a straw, use the ink pad, and all I want to do is just get enough of a, a center point there. 
that I can get started. So I might want to go around that a little bit. And nothing's perfect, you know, it's, but that's the beauty of a mandala. It doesn't have to be perfect. So to start with, usually I begin in the middle with a cross and then an X. So all of those lines cross in the very center. And then from there, I usually put some dots, like maybe four dots, sometimes eight dots around here. About halfway to that next ring, if that's what if that's what strikes my fancy, that's what I do. And then I just draw a shape. And then I'll just rotate my paper and repeat the shape. And that's all you have to do is just repeat the shape all the way around. And then you're ready to go to the next round out and then so sometimes I'll you know I might put the dot these are just my guide points so I'm out a little further than halfway and so now maybe I'll do um, this and you just grow your mandala and don't worry about if, you know, something gets a little bit wonky because it just really doesn't make any difference because it's just, you're just having fun. You're having a good, you're being creative and that's what it's all about. Creativity is not hard. Actually, creativity is very easy if we just do it. So you just keep going and going and going, right? So on this side, you can see how this one has begun growing. And you'll see that this one's on color. Well, this is watercolor paper. And I used acrylic paint, uh, acrylic washes, that are about probably 80% water, about 20% paint, and a couple of different colors. And I just sloshed it on there, let it dry, absolutely 100% dry, so that when you use your Sharpie pen on it, it doesn't clog it up. Because if you try and go over acrylic paint before it's dry, you will kill the pen. Yes, you will. So you just keep doing and going and going and going and growing the designs. And the next thing you want to do then is color it. So you want to color your design. And because you've started out with a background that has color on it in this case, it kind of makes that a little bit easier for you to do. So in the case of this one, this particular mandala started out on this color, which is yellow and green background. So that's what this was. Same thing, acrylic washes. And then I did it exactly the same way using stuff. I drew it with stuff from my kitchen cabinets and my countertop um, and my kitchen drawers. And then I yet added the color to it. Now there's all kinds of ways you can color your mandalas. This particular one, I used um, ink tents. Um, blocks is what these are called ink tense blocks and I used a water brush just picked up the color put it on so that's how I colored this one there are other times when I'll color them using the um, pit artist pen big brushes I love these the color of these is so intense and beautiful come in a whole lot of colors and they're just lovely you can also color them with the Crayola markers these are kids markers uh, colored pencils. I mean, you could do you could do watercolor, more watercolor. You could do washes of acrylic paint on top of it to color it, anything you want. Then comes the fun part. I mean, it's all fun up to now, but now it really gets fun. Even more fun is now what you want to do is use markers, and this is a Molotov paint marker in black, or you can go back to your sharpie uh, sharpie pens in black. And you can start putting the little details in it. And that's what really gets, uh, I don't know, they just kind of come alive when you do that. And then after I do the black, then I'll go back and I'll use white. So this is the Molotov white paint pen, which is great. It stays pretty white on top of all these mediums. And this is the Uniball Signo uh, white pen in broad tip. That works really well too. It's just, you know, you just play with it until you get it the way you want it to be. So let me show you some of the other ones that we have. So this is the one. Oh, I want to show you this. I cut it out. You'll notice it's just a circle. And so that has been cut out of the watercolor paper. This was 
This one was a 90 pound watercolor paper, so it's rather thin. So I cut it out and I usually mount them, I like to mount them, on a color background because it just, I don't know, it just sort of gives it a totally different dimension. So there it is on lavender and and the colors completely change from from the background to background. So there's a turquoise and on a lime green. And the one the color that I find myself going back to over and over is black. And you'll see why when it goes down on black, then I don't know, there's something about it, it just kind of pops the whole thing to life. So to show you some of the other um, mandalas from, these are actually from the Mandala Melange book. This is the Zinnia pattern and I cut it out. You'll notice not, not everything is completely round and so I cut it out and this is ready to mount on to whatever color I want to use. This one was actually colored completely using the Crayola markers and then decorated with the black and the white Molotov markers. There it is on black. Look what happens to it when you put it on green. I mean, it's just totally different look. And if you put it on a, an aqua, I mean, just a completely, or a turquoise, this is more of a teal turquoise. Just beautiful what they do. Anyway, there's the Zinnia. And I'll show you a few of the other ones. Here is the rose mandala. So this is the rose pattern. Again, I cut it out and put it on black. This was colored using the um, pit markers, the big brush pit pens. Easy to use those. And this is the sunflower mandala. And again, this the center of this, I used Tombow markers, which are watercolor markers, and then all the petals out here I did using the um, Pit Artist pens. This one is called the Compass Rose. This is done again with the Pit markers. And then this one is the Petal Mandala. This is the mandala that it, you'll see in the blog post on howtogetcreative.com. This is the one that uses, shows you how to use a compass to draw this. It's a very simple uh, way of drawing. So there it is on that way. And this is the same one, but done with different colors and mounted on white as opposed to mounted on black. So you can see the big difference there. So, you know, that is how you can draw a mandala a whole bunch of different ways, but with no special equipment, just take a look around in your kitchen cabinets and you'll find, I bet you'll find some really cool ways that you can, <laughs> you can make mandalas from nothing, basically. You didn't have to buy a thing. You just grab some paper, grab some stuff and a pen and you're on your way. So thanks for joining me here today. I will see you again in the next tips and tricks video. And hopefully you'll pop on over to our live stream on Fridays at the Creating Faces channel because I'd love to have you join me there. And I will see you again soon. So remember, do something creative today. It's easy.